Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the 10 a.m. Express. And yes, we in feature two, and it's called Human in Leadership. So is there any difference between gender lead will align with Women's Month? And it consists of a discussion around the sometimes continuous topic of whether women in leadership positions adopt different models and show different strengths to men. The 10 a.m. Express presenter, Muslima Ishmael, was in conversation with Harry Walbay, Cook, about this. Let's take a listen. Welcome back to the 10 a.m. Express. Now, this morning, we are also in the month of women. And this morning, we are dis- we are speaking to Harry Walby Cook. He is a business coach and a country partner at Action Coach SA. Good morning, Harry. How are you? Good morning. Very well, thanks. And happy to be with you and your listeners again today. It is definitely a pleasure. So in our last conversation, we were speaking about leadership. We also spoke about management and also working together as a team. But now in this season that we are finding ourselves currently, we are also speaking about leadership and focusing on the leadership with males and females and also in comparison with each other. Now, is the, the first question I wanted to start off with is what exactly are the differences you find between male and female business leaders? Yeah, great question. And first of all, to all the women in particular, happy Women's Day, uh, a, a rightful celebration of all you do for, for the world and for us. Uh, but I, I think there are good and bad leaders in both male and female sides of business and organizations. Uh, but the way we go about leading, I think, is often different. And yes, there's the cliche that anyone could say that it's a generalization, but there are some real principles that highlight over and over again uh, to show that the way we go about leading is different. And that's actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. And as you are mentioning this, it also sparks some thoughts on how leadership changes between males and females and the styles as well. So what styles have you seen being used differently when males are in leadership as opposed to females? Yeah, so I think think any leader, even their own style evolves as they mature in leadership. But if you look at some of the basic distinctions between typical ways of leadership between males and, and women. I, I think it's it's a few things. Women, sadly, sorry, Jen, they just listen better. Uh, and, and I think the, the reality around that is men are wired to listen to respond and listen to fix. And I, and I find that women in leadership positions in particular listen a lot more to understand and a lot more to then get the whole picture before deciding empathy now people mustn't confuse empathy with sympathy because often people think oh you know women are just all these sympathetic people no 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 women are are very powerful empathetic leaders in that they can understand the situation and still be very fair but still be very forceful in in choosing the right outcome that that's going to be a win-win uh scenario so i think empathy and listening for sure different but I think what also happens is there's just a better diversity often uh, in, in male-dominated organizations, especially those ones of the past that were very patriarchal. You, you almost had a, a group think. You know, that's where the, 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 the phrase like old boys club came along. And everybody just behaved the same way, promoted the same type of people, fought the same way, things like that. Where women tend to, because of their nature, want to include diverse range of people, diverse range of skills, diverse range of age groups, diverse range of opinions. And that's actually what an organization needs. That the more diverse the strength of the leadership is, the better for everyone. Mm -hmm. And as you are mentioning this, not to stray too much from the topic at hand, but one thing that I wanted to ask was your thoughts on, as you are mentioning, you know, the diversity being included in businesses and organizations as well, looking at guys from the not being diversity, do you think that from both sides that if 
This is taken into account within leadership right from the beginning. It would actually make a greater difference and also include the understanding from different groups to each other and allowing them to work better together. Oh, absolutely. I think half the problems, or more than half the problems we have in the world is because we haven't been exposed to diversity early enough and we are obsessed with thinking everybody thinks and behaves in a different way. The more you include diversity, the more you realize that certain things we might be different in, but at the core of humanity, a lot of it is the same. And when we start seeing sameness within each other, uh, we're a lot more tolerant and willing to work with the differences, whereas opposed to how we go about life, generally speaking, is we see all these, these big differences and these glaring gaps between people. So I think the earlier you can do that, the better. And I think what what any leader in society should be doing and could be doing is encouraging diversity much sooner, much much younger, and exposing people to an opportunity to learn from people that don't seem like them. Because that's where you're really going to see massive growth. And also working together, it is an essential part of growing anything, whether it's a business, within an organization, even in a family, in a society, and a country as a whole. And we are currently facing the, the issue where there are certain parties not working together, and it's evident in what we are seeing in the past week or so now. But also mm. focusing on the, the gaps that you mentioned, and you, you previously focused on the, the characteristics that are held by women in leadership as opposed to males. But when we look at the pros and cons, there are, of course, always pros and cons from either side, whichever perspective you decide to look at. What do you find are the pros when males are in leadership? Well, I think the reality is there's always three sides to the story. Not two. <laughs> and we're obsessed with trying to prove which one of the two is right. No, no. There's my side of the reality, your side of the reality, and the truth will be somewhere in the middle. Uh, I think, back to your question around males, I think where, where men have traditionally seemed to be better in leadership is they make quicker decisions sometimes. Um, and that's purely because they have maybe more confidence in their back themselves. But also that they are less sometimes worried about what other people think. Now, that is sometimes an ego issue. Up an instinct will, will have a good uh, reaction rate and will make decisions quickly and not always be obsessed with what everybody else thinks. Because I think an important part of leadership in any form, somebody needs to lead. <laughs> we can't have a scenario where everybody is a leader and everybody's a follower, but nobody wants to follow and nobody wants to lead. Leaders are there to make some tough calls and tough, some tough decisions. And I think a uh, really good woman in leadership learn that. They learn that you can't keep everybody happy. And if you look at just what's going on in Cape Town at the moment, mm -hmm. everybody can't be happy. Everybody can't win. We need to find a solution of win-win, a, a healthy compromise, um, but we can't just allow one side to win at the detriment of all the others. Um, and those types of things are important to take into account when one is in any leadership position. Mm -hmm. And one thing that has been standing out for me in listening to the, the perspectives, as you mentioned, the three sides to the story, when listening to, to the both sides and what usually happens in the case of one side being leader as opposed to the other, when taking both of those together, I think what stands out for me personally, and you may you may correct me if I'm wrong, but consistently and constantly can also be a downfall where you are constantly worrying about how will this person feel and how will that group feel and that section feel. And on the other hand, also having to... Having 
too much pride or ego perhaps it leads to it leads you to the point where this is what I'm saying and only this is correct whereas if you are in the middle and you understand what exactly you are there to do and understanding that with everything you do there will be good days there will be bad days and somewhere in the middle you find the perfect harmony for everything to work together and everyone to work in a a good sequence so that everyone can go forward collectively uh, absolutely because both extremes are bad for for the situation so if you look at let's just look at something simple that we can all relate to a a strong mother figure in the family she she will play peacemaker roles she will make sure everybody has their say and feels included and has a voice and then she'll still come out and take everybody out at the knees when she makes the decision and she says that's what we're going to do tough luck and even the father will be looking around and go wow where did that woman come from that maybe that that, that quiet power is is important in leadership it's a balance we have to make a decision and we have to deal with the consequences of some that may not like that that is unfortunately and fortunately what leadership is all about Mm-hmm. Now looking at the, the stats and the facts and we have been discussing women and men in leadership but according to the facts we do see that majority of the leadership in different businesses are taken up by males so at action coach are there any initiatives that are undertaken to empower women in business Well I, I think from two fronts so the first one is is purely from uh internal recruitment both of our franchise partners and of our support staff network um you know constantly looking for good talent across the board but we have got good representation of women there and we have seen some phenomenal growth um and performances of of the both the franchise partners and the staff that we've got uh, at the same time you know, I almost think that that some of our women clients are are better clients on average uh and they just when we coaching the entrepreneurs um and the executives they just get it quicker because they're not fighting a more open I think they're not fighting the ego they're not fighting you know trying to be brave they're going how can I or insecure that come out thriving just with the right level of support um and opportunity to grow so uh, it isn't where it needs to be globally but i think you know even the a recent um announcement uh, in the in the few years and that's that's maybe one of the the main reasons why what started out of this desperation in 2020 when we did our first thriving women summit we continue to do that because it's another initiative committed to ensuring that women support and create a platform for women to thrive it's as simple as that Mm-hmm. And speaking about the, the Thriving Women Entrepreneurs Summit that has been held as you mentioned since 2020 how will this event aid female entrepreneurs to progress and also grow their their businesses Yeah great question so this event started literally because we were all stuck at home uh in 2020 thinking what can we do to add value and it's been such a resounding success that we all have uh this Friday we'll have seven phenomenal women sharing authentically without airs and graces both the good the bad and the ugly of their journey so whether it's somebody talking on creativity innovation employing people resilience um the practical steps to go about implementing you know we've got a range of different speakers all of them have been there done that got the t-shirt it hasn't been a perfect journey they have the same challenges and struggles that every one of the listeners will have but they will provide insights perspective and of themselves in their story giving people permission to shine and the, the feedback that we've had in the past was always around wow I felt like I connected to her and she's she's just like me and if she can do it so can I and that's really what we want to get across is to give people that permission to show them what's possible 
but for giving them permission to go, well, that's no superhuman being. That's somebody that's just like me. And I, if they can do it, I can do it. Uh, and that's why we continue to put the event together. Mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately, I'm sure we can continue with this conversation for much, much longer, but we have reached our time for today. But it was definitely a pleasure having you on. And I think that whatever you have each other, and not only women, but us as people, we can stand together from different groups, from different areas, and from different countries, even to an international level, and support each other in growing together as a unit. But Harry, thank you so much for joining me today. It was definitely a pleasure, and I hope to be speaking to you again soon. Couldn't agree more. Thank you very much. And happy Women's Day to you and uh, everybody else again. Thank you so much. It is definitely a beautiful day today, Women's Day. And that was once again Harry Welby Cook from Action Coach SA speaking to us about female leaders. Now, a reminder once again that this Friday they will be, ha- they will be holding a Thriving Women Entrepreneurs Summit. So do attend that and also take a look at all of the things they have on their website if you are interested. On behalf of the 10 a.m. Express team from myself, Musima Ismail. Happy Women's Day and Assalamu alaikum. The Voice of the Cape. 90-